Jesus called himself the way, which makes sense because his teachings or commandments are the way to eternal life. The way is not a decision made in a moment or a fact you need to believe in, but a path you must walk. The way, pathway. Look at what Jesus said when someone asked him directly how to receive eternal life. Somebody actually <clears throat> asked him, Jesus, how do I receive immortality? How do I receive eternal life? Let's see how this conversation goes. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things I have kept up from my youth. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now you notice how he doesn't instruct him to just in accept a few facts, but instead to keep the commandments and follow me. Cassidy told you that Jesus didn't say this, but here we can see that's exactly what he said. Now look at how the rich young ruler reacts to this commandment to sell his possessions and to follow him. Hey, um, Gideon, I'm getting a lot of, uh, could you mute again, please, bro? Uh, Matthew 12, Matthew 19, or Cassidy, could you mute as well, please, brother? Thank you. Uh, Matthew 19, it continues. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God. All things are possible, all things, including keeping the commandments. Why did Jesus allow that young man to walk away? Why didn't he grab him by the shoulder and say, just get in. All you got to do is believe that I'm going to pay for your sins on the cross. You don't got to sell anything. Instead, he allows him to walk away precisely because there is no other way. If you are not willing to forsake this world and its things, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible makes it clear. Salvation is both a gift and a reward. The word of God says in Matthew chapter 19, starting off in verse 16, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. A rich young ruler approaches the Lord and puts forth the question, What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? To which the Lord responds, Keep the commandments. When dealing with this passage, it is imperative that we understand the purpose of the law in regards to salvation. Romans chapter 3 verse 20 says, Therefore by the deeds of the law, notice this, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Why? For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law, when examined with humility, shows me I am a sinner in need of a savior and brings me unto Christ, manifesting what? The righteousness of God by faith without the law. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to save us? No, to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified, how? By faith. Many mistakenly identify the law as a means of justification rather than a mirror which reflects man's sinful condition and inability to save himself. Look back at Matthew chapter 19, verse 18. The Bible says, he saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And 
Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, notice this, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? The young man, willing to justify himself, asserts that he has kept the law from his youth up. Think about that. Talk about self-righteous delusion. Jesus challenges this false claim by raising the standard in verse 21, inevitably demonstrating what? The imperfection of man and the impossible standard of the law. Look at verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, notice this, he went away sorrowful. Why? For he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. It is impossible for man to inherit eternal life by keeping the commandments. And that is why Jesus appeals to the law when dealing with the rich young ruler. Ideally, the sinner would see the impossible standard set forth and submit to the righteousness of God by faith rather than going about to establish their own righteousness. James chapter 2 verse 10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, don't miss this, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans chapter 3 verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, notice this, unto all and upon all them that what? Believe. The perfect and sufficient righteousness of Christ is imputed unto all and upon all them that believe. The rich young ruler failed to recognize his sinful condition, his inability to save himself, and his need of a savior. Don't let the same be true of you. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved from Hell, The Only Way to Heaven, and Be Saved Today. God bless.